This is 7 National News and in our top story. The call to action and address climate challenges worldwide were louder and clearer than ever before today at the Abu Dhabi Ascent. The high-level meeting was organised by the UAE's capital in an effort to generate momentum ahead of the UN Climate Summit in September this year. The UA Minister of State and Special Envoy for Energy and Climate Change, His Excellency Dr Sultan Ahmed Al Jaba, welcomed delegates from across the globe. In his speech, he said only 15 years are left to address climate change and prevent the global temperature from rising further. To do this, he called on everyone to commit to action now. The Secretary General of the United Nations, His Excellency Ban Ki-moon, reiterated this in his opening speech, if we are to live in a low-carbon future. He said that climate change is a defining issue of our time, with the effects already widespread across the globe, and urged everyone to make the most of the opportunities at Abu Dhabi Ascent. The Climate Summit in New York in September aims to kickstart transformative action and build political impetus ahead of the 2015 UNFCCC United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change or UNFCC conference in Paris, where a global binding climate agreement will be finalized. We have identified nine key areas with the greatest potential for fast and meaningful results. They include energy, cities and transport, finance, resilience, agriculture, and shortly climate pollutants. Many of the solutions we need already exist. Many others are being rapidly developed. But we need to deploy them at a scale that matches the challenge. And we need to do it now because we may not get our second chance. The benefits of addressing climate change include reduce the pollution, improve the public health, fewer disasters, less poverty, cleaner, more efficient and affordable energy, better manage the forest, livable cities, and increase the food security. These are not distant dreams. Around the world, there is a growing effort preparing to make them tomorrow's reality. Together, through these initiatives, we have a shared responsibility to commit to their success and drive forward a decade of action. A decade of action where governments and the private sector must come together and seize real opportunities to advance clean technologies and set the foundation necessary for a sustainable future. The two-day summit aims to involve public and private sectors across the globe to come up with concrete solutions and commit to realising the same goal of a sustainable future. Drought, floods, poverty and a lack of food security are just some of the effects of climate change, which was strongly presented by the former US Vice President and Chairman of the Climate Reality Project, the Honourable Al Gore. He shared a number of photos and videos, in addition to statistics, that showed how the globe is hotter than it was 30 years ago. However, he said the solution is available now, and said that experts estimate that within six years, 82% of the world's people will live in regions where electricity through solar power is equal to or cheaper than that of the average price from other sources. However, it needs everyone's support and collaboration to make it happen. I bring you good news here today. Actions are already being taken. The business community is moving swiftly. The investor community is moving. Many regional and local governments are moving. Some national governments are moving. We are going to prevail. The only question is how long will it take? Prevail. Under the directives of the UA President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan Foundation is sending urgent humanitarian aid to the victims of a series of landslides in northeast Afghanistan. 
The massive landslide triggered by heavy rain is reported to have buried more than 2,100 people, displaced more than 4,000 and destroyed more than 1,000 houses in a remote mountain village area in northeast Afghanistan. Additionally, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the ruler's representative in the Western region and the chairman of the Red Crescent Authority, also under the directives of the UA president, has given directives to send emergency aid to the victims. The relief aid includes tents, food items and medicines. Dubai is looking to become the world's most visited city. That's according to the Emirates Tourism Authority, just one year into the delivery of Dubai's tourism vision for 2020 to attract 20 million visitors annually. According to a DTCM statement, if a growth rate similar to that achieved in 2013 is maintained, a 10.6% year-on-year increase equating to 11 million hotel guests, Dubai will achieve its tourism vision. London currently holds the title of the world's most visited city, with 16 million tourists last year. The announcement comes ahead of the Arabian travel market, which starts on Monday, where the Department of Tourism and Commerce Marketing will discuss the achievements and growth made over the last 12 months. Speaking ahead of the ATM, His Excellency Halal Saeed al Mari, the Director General of Dubai's DTCM, stated that since His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the UAE Vice President and Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, announced the tourism vision for 2020 at last year's ATM, the UAE has won the right to host the Expo 2020 in Dubai. The first phase of our second international airport has opened at Dubai World Central, and a substantial number of new hotels, attractions and events have either opened, taken place or been announced. He added that major legislative changes have also been made, which will directly and positively impact the tourism sector. Dubai's Road and Transport Authority are to dim streetlights in residential areas with low traffic movement in order to reduce energy consumption. The RTA has already started the power-saving policy and Maitha bin Uday, the chief executive of the RTA Traffic and Roads Agency, was quoted in a local daily as saying that 44% of streetlights will be switched off in residential communities after 10 p.m. However, she added, this will vary from one area to another due to several factors, such as the number of lighting poles. The chief executive added that lights will remain on at intersections in order to ensure safety. Notary public services and payments at the Ras Al Khaimah courts can now be accessed online. Customers no longer need to appear at the counter and can now submit any of the listed requests to the notary public online. Ahmed Saeed Al Saya, the Director General of the e Government Authority, was quoted as saying that they want to make the notary services more accessible from anywhere and at any time, and in turn save money, time and effort. He added that the team operating the new notary online services are using the latest information technologies to make the requested services safe, easy and quickly attainable. Al Katiri stated that communication between the enforcement officer and the judge is also done electronically in urgent cases. The notary services may be accessed online via the RAC e-government gate. Nearly 90% of UA residents took a holiday overseas last year. That's according to the latest report. According to an online survey by Visa, 89% of respondents took an overseas holiday last year with India, USA, Turkey, the Maldives and France as the most popular destinations. Marcello Baracordi, the general manager for UAE and global accounts at Visa Mina, was quoted as saying that in 2013, family holidays had the third highest spending incidence among affluent respondents in the UAE. He added that the survey also showed that in terms of expected spending on family holidays over the next 12 months, half of UA respondents said that they would be spending more than the previous year. And finally, looking to other news now, Karl Lagerfeld is looking to open 15 stores in the Middle East, according to reports, having signed a five-year deal with the Chalub Group. 
According to reports, the designer will launch 10 Karl Lagerfeld concept stores in the region, with a further 15 shops by 2018. Patrick Shaloub, the co-CEO of the Shaloub Group, was quoted as saying that they believe that by combining their expertise with Karl Lagerfeld's iconic vision and strategy, they will be able to build a successful brand in the Middle East region and respond to customers' needs and aspirations. The first stores are set to open in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia next month. Pierre Paolo Riggi, the CEO and president of Karl Lagerfeld, was quoted as saying that the agreement was a part of plans to open 100 new stores around the world over the next five years. Lagerfeld will be in Dubai on May the 13th in order to showcase Chanel's latest cruise collection and according to reports, will also use the opportunity to open two shop-in shops and a standalone store which will focus on his range of handbags.